Welcome, everybody. Really glad you're taking the time to watch this session, More Mileage with Milestones. Let's talk how we can align teams with a simple and lightweight framework. However, before we go into that, let's introduce myself. I'm Vincent, and I'm an engineering manager on the Jira platform, looking at the search and enterprise. I'm doing this session not too far away from Amsterdam, somewhere in the Netherlands. And as we're doing this session async, I would really lo love to be in touch. Uh, so ping me on Twitter if you're watching this session and you have questions, comments, or just a compliment, also that would be nice. You might have seen this quote before. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. However, if you go together, so you want to go far probably, you need to align. So if a project get or program gets larger, more teams will be working together. So if this is your situation and a picture like this looks very familiar to you, you should, you're in the right place, you should stick around. Then the question arises, how do we avoid chaos? Teams running all over the place, running into different directions, not aligned on goals and tasks falling through the cracks. To figure this out, let's have a brief look into what makes teams successful. What do they need and what are the things they don't need? At the last thing, we did some research on what drives teams' health. And we distilled four things that are really important and are key drivers for the health of your team. And I will come back later on why they're relevant for the little framework we're introducing in a bit. So what are those? First of all, it's a shared understanding of the team's goal and each role uh, in pursuing them. So everyone knows like, hey, based on what I'm doing, this is how I'm contributing to the goals of my team. Secondly, it's about adaptive planning. So people are allowed to change certain things and we change our plan and dates accordingly if, if we have to based on the things we learn. So things are not too set in stone. It's good to set goals, but we have to be adaptive. The third thing is like that we have a place to celebrate and we have achieved, so we can celebrate achievements and we don't punish failure, but we learn from failure in a blame-free environment. Another important aspect for teams to consider are autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Teams want that, and we're not going to focus too much on the mastery and purpose bit because those are two separate sessions, I guess. However, for the session, autonomy is really important. Teams want to own the project and make their own decisions and run them, and they don't want to have too much top-down pressure on those. In our internal engineering team, we call it radical autonomous team and aligned teams. You need to think through how autonomous your teams are in basically every aspect. How they organize, how they ship code, how they manage the projects. A lot of methodologies focus like standardizing all the things, which adds a lot of overhead, takes away decisions from teams. And that's something we like to avoid. We think teams should learn from each other, but they should be able to pick and choose what works for them and what doesn't work at all, because it creates a lot of creativity and we can still learn from each other and picking best practices. It's always mentioned in the Agile Manifesto quite a while ago. It's individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And I'm really not saying like processes are not important because like in this session, we're introducing one as well, but it should be lightweight. And this is 20 years old by now, so it should be something that is a common practice across the board. You know what 20 years old is? It's 20 years old as well, this little phone. I had one myself, but some of you might not even know what this thing is. It looks kind of like a brick, right? So let's keep it lightweight and make sure teams have as much ownership as possible. Let them pick what works well for them and eliminate what doesn't work for them. Introducing milestone-driven development. A lightweight framework to align teams with as few artifacts and roles as possible. It's very nimble and keeps teams as autonomous as possible while aligning them. And also, importantly, creating a lot of visibility for stakeholders, which is a key thing as well. There are three artifacts in this little framework. We have a program. So if you have a larger program of work, this is where you group certain things. Think about like, hey, I want to build my online store or the second iteration of it or whatever. This is where you bundle them. You can even have a fancy project name if you like. The second one is a milestone. That's the thing you're trying to achieve. A really metric-driven goal you want to want to aim for, for. For example, reduce the number of people that are not checking out on your online store. 
Lastly, we have projects. Uh, a project will be owned by one team and they will execute on it. And a project will, will contribute to like a mouse in your setting. It can be one project that's contributing to a mouse, but it can be many more of all, depending on the size of it. An example of that can be redesigning your shopping cart of your own one store. It also easily fits within an agile process if you're using that. A lot of teams already might already do that. So hopefully this looks familiar. So if you look at the bottom layer, underneath the project, there will be epics and tasks. And you can use your favorite tool to actually organize those, et cetera. So nothing will change, uh, change on that layer. We also have a few roles. There will be a team. And as the last thing is all about teamwork, uh, this is, might be very familiar. And a team will own one or more projects. I think it's really important that teams will be as focused as possible. It's sometimes it's good for them to have multiple streams running depending on the size and skills of the team. Secondly, and this is a very important person, we have a milestone owner that's responsible for the milestone or a kind I should say, and all the projects underneath. They can delegate the ownership of the project to the members on the team, but that's up to the, the milestone owner. And lastly, we have a stakeholder and I don't think they need any further introduction. Before we get into an, a real example, I would like to introduce Team Central as this plays a role in how we're going to implement the framework I just like, introduced. And Team Central is a new product from Atlassian, and it's kind of there to replace the, all the places you put status update that nobody reads uh, uh, right now and have them in one place in a more interactive manner. A few examples for, of the key features of Team Central. Uh, it, it keeps Stakeholders informed by a weekly digest, like you see here on the screen. It really allows you to like set goals and connect projects to them. So you can really see, hey, which projects are in flight and what are they trying to achieve as a as a collective. You can define tags so you can create views on your own, but also can group connected programs of work. So you can really get the program layer I was mentioning before right into the tool as well. And it makes it really easy to follow along or whenever you go back, have a check and see what's going on if you if you want to want to see it in between weeks. And lastly, it has a simple yet effective queer language. So you can get your personal view, whatever it is, or if you want to have an overview across multiple programs, there's something you can actually have a look and define views yourself, which might be very powerful. And there are always power users in the house, so you can uh, try a lot of different things. Okay. That was the theory and introducing a new tool. Let's bring it all into practice. Let's build something. You probably have a lot of builders uh, listening in this session, so it might be great if you're going to actually build something. And let's lose a classic example. Let's build a pet store. That used to be a classic example in many software and open source projects. And to put you at ease, we're not selling pets. We're selling pet supplies here. It's just an excuse to add a dog picture to this presentation. Introducing the pet store program. It's an online store where you can buy pet supplies. And like every online store, and we're using them every day, we have a, a, a key set of requirements. For mouse and one, we're just going to really focus on like launching the store where you can browse, where you can add, to, add items to your shopping cart and check out and pay and have it delivered. In the second mouse, we're going to make it a little bit more advanced. We will have search. And we have comparison of different items that are being sold. And in Mouse and 3, we're going to make it really advanced. We're going to add returns because like sometimes you buy the wrong stuff. And we're going to give you recommendations so we can increase the items we sell in the online store. It is where we bring both Team Central and Mouse and Driven together. together. And this here, we're going to create a goal. We're going to get a name like we said earlier in, in, in Nelson 1, it's the pet store launch. We're going to give it a status. We're going to give them a, a target date. And more importantly, we're going to give it, give it a little bit more detailed description where we set out our goals. In this case, we want to have a thousand daily visitors and a thousand dollar of day, daily revenue. Like this is just for illustration purposes, but you kind of get the idea like how you would do this in your own business where you will be very metric oriented. For this milestone, we have a bunch of projects applied, and they're really like I mentioned before. We have browse, pets, a shopping cart, and a checkout. And they also have different target dates. We have April, May, and June in this example, and two of them are on track. 
and one of them is off track, and we're going to go back to that later. We also have different milestone owners, right? Uh, sorry, we have different project owners in the in this set. So the milestone owner kind of like delegated like who's owning the different various streams underneath the milestone, which makes it easy to like create more scope across the board so you can run more things in parallel if that's needed to hit your milestone. Both project and milestone owners will update their status every week. This is something people might already do, but it's a really good habit to evaluate like with your team to see, hey, what are the risks? Where are we at? Like, did something change? And because they're entering like Team Central, there will be a weekly digest that will be mailed like uh, on a Monday morning right into your mailbox. So you can have a look as a habit, something I personally do, like one of the first things on my Monday morning, go through all the projects I'm following and see what's going on. And this really helps to automatically like keep your stakeholders very well informed. One other thing that's cool that's I've seen emerging is like people add a lot of Loom videos here. So this created a really async version of like giving demos, which allows you to react again. So it makes this really interactive cycle, which works really well in a remote environment. And updates can be very interactive as well, like just like stakeholders can ask questions instead of doing it in a one-on-one or just doing it uh, in a Slack channel. It's just like right here, visible for everyone. So people don't have to get the same questions too often. People can give reactions. So you can even celebrate when something cool happens when they ship an intermediate mouse or when they ship the whole mouse and like the whole uh, organization can cheer, which is, uh, which is a fun thing to do. And we automatically like update everyone involved. So I want to talk a little bit more about status and target date. Going back to the adaptive planning bit, like we can set the target date and it's called target date for a reason because it's not like, hey, this is when we ship. This is like, we know it's going to happen, but this is what we aim for. Things might change, but we have a target where we want to run for. And Team Central, which is a thing I really like, allows us to set quarters, months, or days. Uh, so based on your level of certainty, you can go more, you can be more and more specific uh, once you are further along. So initially you might set it like you're going to ship it in June, but getting close to the release, like we decided maybe together with marketing, you're going to ship it like uh, June 15th and be really specific about it. Again, this helps with setting expectations and not changing things too much. The other one is the status. And that kind of like shows like, hey, how do we feel achieving the target date? There will be, there is on track. It's basically like, hey, don't worry about it too much. Things are going fine. You're pretty confident. There is a risk, like we're a little bit less confident because some risk might materialize and we're keeping a client, keeping a close eye on this, or we already have some mitigation in, pro, in, in progress. Lastly, there's off track. And that basically means like, we're not going to hit the target date. A risk will be materialized and we need to put a mitigation plan in place. And I would like to talk a little bit more about off-track because like off-track will draw attention. Like stakeholders will be like, hey, what's going on? Things are red and, you know, red things attract a boom. Uh, so basically like we'll see people getting attention. People will ask a question, which is of course totally fine because stakeholders will be interested like on why things uh, are not going as we expect anymore. And this is a really great opportunity to learn as a group and make sure this becomes a normal habit like when Risk materialize, we communicate that, we see how we can help each other and learn from mistakes and things that happen to prevent it in the future. So that's really about celebrating achievements, but also like um, a regular opportunity to reflect in a, in a, in a blank free environment. The last thing about like helping each other out is that uh, Team Center really allows you to have like, in the, a lot, has a really good integration with, with Confluence and, and the editor. Uh, so this really prevents you from repeating yourself uh, and allows you to have very effective status meetings. So instead of like everyone repeating the status like in a meeting, you don't have to do it anymore because it's already in a written form in Team Central. And you can just like focus on the things that are not going as we expected. In this case, last one, the checkout. So instead of like having the first 10 minutes like on the first, so we can just dive directly into uh, the projects that are off track and see how we can mitigate the things that are happening, where the teams should jump in, et cetera. So this is how you can really go far together and, and stay aligned. Okay, let's wrap up. We discussed what makes teams successful. We introduced milestone-driven 
development, and we introduced Team Central as a tool to in, implement that. Uh, so hopefully this really helps to stay aligned and go far together. So let's go back to the team health uh, indicators where we say, hey, what makes a team healthy and what makes a team successful? First of all, there's a shared understanding and both milestone driven development and Team Central really helps you to define goals and, 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 and the projects that are contributing to those. So everyone knows where they're aiming for to be able to build a shared understanding. As we're really communicating like status uh, and target dates with, with, with Team Central, we're really enabling this depth planning when things not, are not going as we, we, we think they were, or we're learning new things along the way, we can really change how we, how we want to move forward and communicate it as well. So it really enables like a, an environment where we go for adaptive planning. We also saw like that it's all very interactive and we actually like marking ticket as, as shipped. It really helps you to enforce the celebration so people can cheer and celebrate and can, can figure out like how they want to uh, uh, celebrate as a team, both like async or in the same form. And lastly, with things like off track and we really uh, enforcing an environment where we can learn from things that are not going as we expected. And hopefully we, 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 we create and, and, and nurture like a blame free environment. This also really aligns with the last mission because we want to release the potential of your team. Thank you so much.